welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Ariana Jasmine, and today we will be reacting to Abby Martin coming on to Piers Morgan's show. I'm really excited for this react. You already know we love her, and we love a good react, so welcome in. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment for more videos like this, and let's get into it. You're an official spokesman for the Israeli government, and you have no idea how many civilians you've killed. Since no, you're not foggy when it comes to killing terrorists. You're only foggy, it seems to me, when it comes to killing civilians. Israel needs to be stopped before they continue this horrific onslaught, Piers. This is war. In war, people die. It's been a dramatic 24 hours in Israel's war on Hamas. First, Israel said it was finally preparing to enter Rafa, the southern Gazan city, which has become a refuge to a million and a half Palestinians. Allies have warned against it, fearing catastrophic civilian impact. But Israel says that Rafa is also the refuge for the remaining Hamas battalions. Last night, Hamas announced it would have accepted the term, terms of a ceasefire proposed by intermediaries, but Israel rejected it. And overnight, it seized Rafah's crossing with Egypt, a key entry point for vital humanitarian aid, and began attacking the east of the city. In a moment, I'll talk to Abby Martin and Mossad Hassan Youssef. He looks like what you see on the side of your bed when you have sleep paralysis. Like, why is he looking up at me like that? His pure presence just makes me feel uncomfortable. Like, I don't know how else to explain it. Why does he look like that? The first from Jerusalem is Israeli government spokesman Abby Haim. Mr. Haim, thank you very much indeed for joining me. Why did Israel reject this uh, apparent offer of a peace deal from Hamas that they'd agreed to? Hi, Piers. Thank you so much for having me on. Um, I'm not sure what Israel has rejected. I know that Hamas put out uh, a statement that they had uh, accepted some kind of a proposal. It's uh, somewhat unclear to us what proposal they accepted. This was obviously, as my prime minister said in the last hour, a way of trying to torpedo our entry into Rafa. And as you said, the last four battalions of Hamas are in Rafa. Our war aims remain the same to destroy Hamas, bring home the hostages and ensure that Gaza doesn't pose a threat to us. As the Prime Minister said, with or without a deal, we're going to need to go into Rafa. So we entered Rafa. We're keeping the pressure up, the military pressure on Hamas. That's what worked last time when we got about half of the uh, hostages released. And that's what we're, we're doing now. We will keep up the pressure and explore all of the diplomatic channels. I don't really understand why Piers would give this man a platform unless he's here for Piers to challenge him. If it's not, then Piers is just a shill. I'm sorry I hate to say it, but use your platform, my guy. Like, ask him some questions. He's an Israeli spokesperson. Everything he just said is a lie. Come on, let's go. But at the moment, Hamas's position is far, far away from ours, sadly. How many civilians in Rafa of the one and a half million people there, is Israel prepared to view as collateral damage to eliminate the remaining Hamas terrorists? Piers, as you know, the IDF does our absolute utmost to avoid civilian casualties. Um, just in the first day of the operation, we take- Piers, as you know. No, we don't. Why don't you explain how you do that, please? Please explain, please let us know. Wow, what? This is wild. In 100,000. Um, um, citizens, uh, civilians from Rafa, out of Rafa. Well, that leaves 1.4 million. Okay, and it's a it's a work in progress. So uh, I well, can my tell question, you, that you know, my question is that you're you're trying to eliminate Hamas completely, but in the process already, you pretty much. He said the evacuations are a work in progress, babe. You've already made these people evacuate th three to four times to this point, and everyone who was in Rafa, in eastern part of Rafa, who got the flyers that y'all dropped on them, most of them had to go to Khan Yunus. There's literally nothing left in Khan Yunus. Khan Yunus is basically dead zone. So I mean, I don't know. I feel like all these Israeli people want so much praise for warning people and making them evacuate but it's like where are they supposed to go what are they supposed to do you're not necessarily giving them much of an option destroyed most of northern gaza you've already killed up to 40,000 people depending on whether you accept the uh, the hamas run uh, health authority numbers obviously a number of those people uh, are hamas and a large number are innocent civilians women and children and if you go into someone like rafa which has a million and a half people who've been told to go there by Israel, who've been displaced from their homes, which have been destroyed in the main, and gone to this refugee camp, how many could die before Israel says, we can't continue this operation? We're fighting against Hamas, a genocidal terror organization. I've seen your coverage, your tremendous coverage of what Hamas did to us on October 7th. You and I know they want to do it again and again and again. That's their words, not mine. Now, we'll do what we have to do to go after Hamas, 
to avoid civilian casualties, something that we have successfully done. Out of that Hamas number that you just gave, more than 14,000 are terrorists that we took out. There's more than 25,000 Hamas and Islamic Jihad terrorists how taken many, off so the How back. many civilians do you believe you've killed? We, we don't have exact figures, as you know, it's the fog of war. But you've got exact numbers for Hamas terrorists you've killed. Why wouldn't you know how many civilians you've killed? Because obviously our focus is to go after the Hamas terrorists and... Uh, no, we, hang on, do I mean, that does imply that you, you're putting a bigger premium on killing Hamas terrorists in terms of numbers and accountability than you are on innocent civilians. That can't be right, surely. If you know exactly how many Hamas terrorists you've killed, you must know how many civilians you've killed. Otherwise, you're prioritising the lives of terrorists over innocent people. Piers, with respect, don't put words into my mouth, please. I didn't say exactly 14,000. I said around 14,000. Whereas Hamas will come out with precise uh, numbers that statisticians well, will look at. Give me a ballpark number for civilians. Well, well, you can you can use the ballpark uh, as far as uh, the Hamas figures, which I reject as being false. Well, if they're so, false, why would uh, you give me those? I had I gave you the, the numbers that I had. No, you told me you I've, know you know how many Hamas terrorists you've killed, but you don't seem to have any idea how many civilians you've killed. I'm just bemused. Why wouldn't you keep count of both? I, I don't have that information to give you, uh, Piers. If I did, I well, would. You've literally no idea how many civilians you've been killing. I can tell you definitively that our aim is to go after Hamas. No, We've done it six I'm sorry to push you on this. That's quite extraordinary. You're no, 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 don't be sorry. Push him. Push him in his BS, please. Thank you. I don't like peers. I don't think I ever will, but maybe he'll actually do some good in this clip. Official spokesman for the Israeli government, and you have no idea how many civilians you've killed. I thought you just told me that you were particularly careful about not killing civilians, but if you don't know how many you've killed, how can you say that with any certainty? Because even if you were to go by a ratio of the Hamas figures, we would still be far ahead of any Western That wasn't my question. You know it wasn't my question. I don't, I don't have the information. You literally have no idea how many civilians you've killed. It's not that I don't know. I'm not authorised to give the information. I don't have the information. That's complete you. nonsense. Why are you authorised to give me the number of terrorists you've killed but not the number of civilians? I don't understand. Can you explain? Piers, we will go after Hamas. We will ensure that we... Um... Oh my God, he's like a robot on repeat. He's literally like a, like a tape recorder, just repeating what he has memorized over and over and over again. That's not what Piers has asked, dude, come on. You Returns want me to believe you're being incredibly careful about how many civilians you're killing and you have an amazing exemplary record, but you don't know how many civilians you're killing. So how do I know you've been careful? Piers, when the dust settles, we will come out with the proper numbers. Hamas runs to the press daily but you, with hey, false... When the dust settles, a lot of people will have died, and you know how many Hamas you've killed, but you don't know how many civilians you've killed. And I'm just asking you why. Why is it you've kept a record of one, but not the other? I, I personally don't have that information to give to you. You can ask me over and over. I'm not going to come up with more information. I don't so you, personally you don't have know. I don't have the information for you. Well, you're an official government spokesman for the Israeli government and you have no idea. Piers, I, I came on here to focus on what's going on with the well, war. Well, actually, you came on here to answer that. my questions, uh, I think. Yeah, and, and I, I don't have an answer for you for that. And so. I didn't intend to press you on this point because I assumed that you would not... I love how the Israeli spokesperson literally has a British accent. Which part of Europe are you from, bro? Come on, tell me. Respond the way you have. But I've never had an Israeli spokesman who simply said, I, I have no idea. Particularly after you boasted about that. the fact that you've been very smart in the way you've avoided killing civilians. How do you know if you've got no idea how many you've killed? Because I know the way in which the IDF operates. I know um, the way in which we go after the terrorists in the best possible way. It's not what I've said, it's what General Petraeus has said. It's what um, John Spencer from uh, West Point has said. Mm. It's it, 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 it's what's... Uh, Who is John Spencer? Like, why is he quoting people literally nobody knows? Uh, multiple uh, British generals have said that Israel goes out of its way to avoid civilian casualties. That's what we'll do. If you can point to me to... Oh, okay. You know what's crazy? Rishi Sunak himself has says that he does not approve the way that Israel has been going about this. So if you're going to quote someone from the British government, at least go with some what people know, like Rishi Sunak or I don't know, the fucking monarchy or something. I, I don't understand why he's putting out the fucking names of random people he met in pubs. You know what I mean? Like...
Say say something accurate, dude. Like, I, I don't know who you're talking about and I don't care about their opinion. If he would have quoted someone like, you know, an entity like the UN or WHO or, you know, UNICEF, I would have been like, okay, he has a point, but he's naming out random British people. <laughs> I don't care. To another um, conflict by which they have um, evacuated, got out of harm's way civilians to the extent that Israel has done, then fine. If you put, want sorry, with respect, Mr. Diamond, how can you possibly expect me to accept any comparisons to any other conflict or war, given that you do not know how many civilians you've killed? Piers, you understand that uh, I can't uh, prosecute the war over the over the media. I'm I just asking you for basic, I'm not, I'm basic not information. I'm just I'm so, honestly, I'm just, I do, I'm not trying to trap you. And I'm not trying to unfairly harangue you. I think people are watching this and they'll make their own conclusions. I just find it astonishing that the moment I asked you how many Hamas you killed, you could tell me immediately. And the moment I ask you about civilians, you haven't got a clue, literally. That you're not even prepared to issue a ballpark number. And I, I think people will find that staggering, particularly given that you are insistent that you're doing everything you can to avoid killing civilians. To which, again, I just simply ask, how do you know? If you don't know how many you're killing, how can you possibly be sure that you are, A, doing better than other, other people waging war elsewhere, or, B, that you have any idea how many you're killing? You, you don't, clearly. The IDF monitors every single um, action that it takes. It weighs out the options. It doesn't of, of tell every, you, the official and, spokesman. And it, avoids, and it avoids civilian casualties in the best possible way. How do you like know, said, Mr Hyman? Even, even if you were to take it, uh, please... Even no, if you're please, allowed, you, sorry, with respect, hey. you come on here as the official Israeli government spokesman and, and you, you don't want to be asked how many... You, you know, with all the money and the power and the general assistance that the Israeli government gets for propaganda, you would expect them to at least train their spoke spokespeople in a better manner to the point where they can actually respond to questions and not spout a bunch of propaganda, right? Like, for example, Karine Jean-Pierre, I don't like her either, right? But when you genuinely listen to her, she spins the answer to certain questions and you won't even know she spinned it because she's a good comms person, you know what I mean? As much as I don't like her as a person. But what's interesting to me is when Israel gets so much money and so much power and yet they still choose to not even try on their public like, relations. They don't even try to train people properly. I don't know. It's the most bizarre thing ever. Because you don't know. And yet you want us to draw comparisons to other conflicts in a positive no. way for Israel. And you want to tell me that IDF make a, a, a record of every single thing they're involved in, but they don't give it to you, the government spokesman. So that when I ask you, you have no idea. Do you understand how ridiculous that sounds? With respect. With all due respect, I've told you that even if you were to use the Hamas figures, the ratio would still be better than any other army. And that's where the comparison can be done. However, we know above and beyond that, that the Hamas figures are not accurate. And we know from former uh, conflicts that Hamas throws in- uh, You don't, any... you don't know that. You literally don't know that because very reputable organizations have actually said that the Hamas numbers are extremely accurate. You don't know that. You're just pulling shit out of your ass at this point. Like Hamas or not, that's not my point. The numbers that the Gaza Health Ministry puts out on a daily basis is extremely accurate and it's been backed by multiple sources, which by the way, it's from the Gaza Health Ministry, not exactly directly. I mean, it's under the umbrella of Hamas, but Hamas isn't necessarily run it. But anyways, beyond the point, the IDF continuously lies over and over and over again. And it's one of those things where it's like, you can't point at other entities that very reputable organizations have said is a reputable source and say, oh, they're a terrorist group, therefore they're not right. But we're right, even though I can't give you the full numbers of, you know, civilian casualties. That's crazy. Anyone that's, you know, someone could have passed away from a heart attack, someone could have... Uh, so why is you know, it that Israel it's, it's, actually, it's, after it's, previous... That's what after they've done in the past. Well, why is it after previous death tolls have been released by Hamas through the Palestinian Health Authority, uh, they've actually turned out to be ones that Israel has concurred with in the main? Do you, can you not count either? Piers, we're in the fog of war. We're fighting for our very existence. No, you're not foggy when it comes terrorist to killing terrorists. You're only foggy, it seems to me, when it comes to killing civilians. We're, we're fighting as a terrorist organization that spent the last 16 years embedding itself underneath and within a civilian population. They're fighting from mosques, from hospitals, from UN facilities. I, I don't know if there's a comparison of any war in modern history um, in which a terrorist organization has 
embedded its way itself the way that Hamas has in Gaza. We are doing our very utmost to go after Hamas. And like I said, when the dust settles, you will see that. OK. Uh, Avi Harman, the Israeli government spokesman, thank you very much. Well, I'm joined now by the pro-Palestine journalist and commentator, Abby Martin, and by Mossad Hassan Youssef, the son of Hamas's founder and former leader, author of a new book, From Hamas to America. Welcome back. Mossab Hassan Yusuf, Palestinian ex-militant. A Palestinian ex-militant who defected to Israel in 1997, thereafter working as an undercover agent for Shin Bet until he moved to the United States. The Shin Bet considered Yusuf to be Israel's most valuable source within Hamas leadership. The information he supplied allowed Israel to successfully thwart dozens of Palestinian suicide attacks and prevent the assassinations of many Israelis. Nicknamed the Green Prince, using the color of Islamist group's flag, the prince, because of his pedigree and the son of one of the movement's founders, the intelligence he supplied to Israel led to the exposure of many Hamas cells, as well as prevention of dozens of suicide bombs, blah, blah, blah. He has said that he did not inform for money, but rather that his motivations were ideological and religious, and that he only wanted to save lives. In May 2016, talking to the Jerusalem Post Conference in New York, Yusuf said that at one point he was simultaneously working for and being paid by Israel, the United States, the Palestinian Authority, and Hamas? How do you get paid for by all th four of these entities? He went on to say that Islam as a whole is comparable to Nazism and must be defeated. Oh my god, the guy is a fucking mess. Back to both of you. Uh, Abby Martin, I found that, I've got to say, a quite extraordinary interview. Um, to be an official government spokesman and admit you have no idea how many civilians you've killed whilst trying to simultaneously compare yourself favourably to other civilian death ratios in, in war seemed to me staggering. Indeed. I mean, especially since we have seen the comparison as the dust has been settling real time on our phone. He needs to stop looking at the camera like that. I don't know. <laughs> we see Israel has committed, in fact, some of the most heinous war crimes in modern history, Piers. And as we're seeing the invasion now of Rafa cutting off the last vestige of escape for Palestinians, the last vestige of, of aid delivery, 1.3 million Palestinians, including 600,000 children with nowhere left to go. This is what Palestinians were told was a safe corridor. That is why they all fled to Rafah. Rafah has been bombarded for the last several weeks, killing dozens of people every day. So I think at this point, six months into a... He looks like he's ready to chase someone down. No, for real, like, why is he looking at the camera like that? Genocide, to be deliberating whether or not Israel should continue with this onslaught, this military operation that will result in mass slaughter to continue their ethnic cleansing of Gaza is frankly absurd. Patently so, considering what we've seen them do just in the last several weeks, peers. Evidence of summary executions of doctors, evidence of mass graves, hundreds of bodies bound, dozens of men, women, and children bound. Evidence, according to the UN, of Palestinians buried alive, using drones to lure out Palestinians with sounds of crying children so they could be shot and killed. I mean, this is unparalleled in modern history, actually. And the devastation that's occurred in the Gaza Strip, according to the UN, will take 80 years to rebuild without conditions. So at this point, Israel needs to be stopped before they continue this horrific onslaught, Piers. Mossab, um, I'll get you to respond to what Abby just said, but does your response to that interview with an Israeli government spokesman, because I've got to say, I found that pretty stunning that he would he would be so certain how many Hamas terrorists uh, the IDF have killed, but, but admit he had no idea how many civilians have been killed, given that it's the deaths of the civilians that is getting Israel so much unpopular reaction around the world. You know, because, because we cannot send the Israelis to Rafah and to dangerous zones to uh, collect statistics and count uh, the numbers. Uh, it this can't be the best person Israel can put forward. I'm sorry. <laughs> he said, we can't send people to Rafah because it's too dangerous. Okay, then how did you figure out that 14,000 Hamas militants were killed? Did someone just like put on a Harry Potter invisible cloak and walk through there without no one being able to see them? And you guys just were magically able to point out who was Hamas and who wasn't. And you were able to get those numbers, but not the civilian ones. It's, uh, it's a very dangerous zone. We, uh, Israel is looking from the outside. 
And also, who said that Israel is only uh, responsible for the killing of Gazans? Mostly Hamas responsible, first of all, for taking human shields. Second, they're booby traps. How could you differentiate the death that it was caused by an airstrike or by a Hamas death trap? How, how, how can you figure out the difference between a Hamas booby trap and air raids? How? I don't know. I mean, honestly, I've, I've stumped just like this guy. I think he's making great points. How do we know the difference? Well, yeah, but so that, the, the point war, I would make, people though, die. Yeah, but Listen, say. Happy Martin looks so confused. <laughs> Yeah, listen the, to me, all this moral peers, no, listen to me, listen to me. All this dilemma, you know, you're going with your uh, whatever morality. This is war. In war, people die. You need to uh, wake up to this reality, accept it, stop this denial. We are in the face of savages who hijacked an entire society. Mm. This is a very difficult war. No other army can do the job, and I'm not willing to risk thousands of lives of foot soldiers to deal with this type of savages who hijacked the entire society. A hundred thousand people could have died. Israel is doing everything. What happened to this guy? I just need to know. How is he so racist towards his own people? He's literally calling his own people savages. Like what, what happened here? Is it self hate? Is it trauma? Is it money? I don't know. I can't tell. Everything they could don't reduce it to the point do you have statistics? Who cares? Well, actually, Egypt, no, I think they're missing my point. Authority, yeah, Mossad. Jordan. All right. The Arab world don't want Hamas at whatever cost. Mossad. Whatever it costs, we want to remove Hamas from power. OK, I understand that. That's a different question. My point is why... Do you? Well, why does... My, my question is this for you. Why is it that, the, if, as you say, Israel has no way of working out who's being killed here, and I know all about war, my brother served in wars in Iraq and Afghanistan. My brother-in-law served in wars. My grandfather served in wars. My uncle served in wars. I don't need a lecture about what warfare is, but I do find it surprising that Israel's official spokesman, months and months into this war, is able to tell me immediately how many Hamas terrorists have been killed by Israeli forces, but admits he hasn't got a clue how many civilians have been killed. And I'm sorry, I think most viewers, because they most count. viewers will they find that stunning. You corpses. say, you say Israel has no way of checking, all over but they the seem place. to have a way of checking how many Hamas they're killing, Mossad. Uh, listen, it's Israel's responsibility to know the death of their own citizens. This is their responsibility. I don't think, I think your question was absurd. This is why you put him on the spot. He was not prepared for I didn't it. Put but him this on is the not spot. the reality on the ground. The reality on the ground, Hamas must go. I, the only uh, uh, side want Hamas to stay is the Iranian Ayatollah. And for some stupid reason, Karen in America wants Hamas to stay. But the Arab world, let me tell you something. George there's so much to unpack here. First of all, this man needs to go see a therapist because there's a certain level of self-hate and self-loathing that has to exist in a person for you to speak about your own people in this way, right? Imagine me as an Iranian. I end up going into Iran during the time of a war where my people are getting genocide. I start spying on my people for America. And then I start going on these like interviews saying that, oh, we just, I don't know about civilian casualties in Iran. I don't care. We just have to take out the Ayatollahs, right? Like, this is crazy dystopian shit I would expect to see on Rick and Morty, not real life. And it's wild because it's just like, he's not even answering the question. He's like, well, Israel is not even supposed to. We don't have that responsibility to count and see how many civilians we killed. Even if you feel like you don't fundamentally have that responsibility to know how many civilians were killed, you still need to know the the number like if you know that 14 about 14,000 Hamas militants were killed allegedly then you should know how many civilians were killed because the idea is that you sifted through all the civilian deaths and you said okay this amount is Hamas this amount is civilian right not only he he's falling apart exactly he's falling apart 
on the most basic question. And, he, and this is another thing. If you just resort to yelling on a debate panel, you've automatically lost. I feel like yelling should be done when you have tried to explain your stance multiple times and then that person isn't listening so then you just start yelling you're like listen you're not listening to me like listen to me whatever this guy just kind of came on and he started pointing he's like listen to me you cornered that guy ball you're wrong without actually stating any factuality to anything he's saying more than egypt saudi arabia the majority of the arab world we are arab i am arab we are not palestinians we don't want hamas we don't want islam we want islamists out of power. Okay. It's as simple as that. All right. They Let me have been killing Jewish and Arab children. All right. you... This is not your game. This is not her game. It's not about statistics. It's, not a game. it's about it... doing the correct thing of remo removing Hamas from power. Mossa. End of the story. Let me interrupt. Because you, you quoted Saudi Arabia in your rant there. So let me read you a, a, a statement from the Saudi foreign ministry. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs expresses yeah. the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's warning of the dangers of the Israeli occupation forces targeting the city of Rafah as part of a systematic bloody campaign to storm all areas of Gaza Strip and displace its residents towards the unknown in light of a lack of safe zones after the massive destruction caused by the Israeli war machine. The Ministry affirms the Kingdom's categorical rejection of the occupation forces' continued blatant violations of international resolutions calling for the, cease, uh, the cessation of these massacres and their violations of international law and international humanitarian law without deterrence, which mm. exacerbates the humanitarian crisis and limits international peace efforts. The ministry renewed the kingdom's demand for the international community to intervene immediately to stop the genocide carried out by occupation forces against defenseless civilians in the occupied Palestinian territories. So when you say all Arabs agree with you, Mossad, actually they don't. That is the Saudi yes, foreign well, ministry listen, saying they as, want as it to stop speak, right now. As we speak... As we speak, the uh, intelligence services of the Arab world, all of them in a joint operation room with Israel to rid of Hamas. I don't care about some politician trying to make a political statement. It's false. The reality on the ground, we don't want Hamas. We don't want Islamists. We don't want this anarchy, this revolution without a moral compass. We don't want to globalize it. We don't want to bring it to... I mean, he's saying that all Palestinians want to get rid of Islamists, right? I just, I don't think him or any other person can speak for a whole entire group of people. And this is what the other Zionist that came on to Piers a couple weeks ago did as well. Her name was Emily. And she was like, oh, Iranians want Israel to bomb their country. And although she got that information from an anecdotal poll that she made on her Instagram story, which by the way, she's a raging Zionist. So any follower she has would obviously skew in that direction. But a Zionist white woman named Emily does not represent me and what I want for the people of Iran, which is just coincidentally happens to be my people as well. I don't want my people to get bombed by Israel. That's insane. And that's not an ask I would ever want from any country to do, period. Because I believe that wars result in unnecessary civilian casualties. But with that being said, this is a common issue when it comes to Zionists and their ideology because they start speaking for a group of people as if they're all a part of a monolith that all believes in the same thing. Which is not, it's just not true, right? Some Arabs may love Hamas. Some Arabs may hate Hamas. Some Arabs may be neutral. Some Arabs are Jewish. Some Arabs are Muslim. Some Arabs are Christian. Although, you know, the population density of some of those is less than the other. But all of these things can exist. Not one people are the same. So he's going on this crazy rant about how all Arabs want one thing. You're going to get easily disputed because that's a ridiculous claim to make and it's also incredibly ignorant. You cannot speak for all Arab people regardless of whether you are ethnically Arab or not. To the United States, the game is over, Hamas is out, and their death warranty has been issued. It's a finished job. All right, and we are going bring... into Rafah and we are going to eliminate every last one okay, of them. Let me bring in Abby. Abby, you've been, you've been listening to this. I mean, fundamentally, I understand why Israel and Israelis want to eliminate Has Hamas completely, because this is a terror group who are wedded to the eradication of Israel and everybody in it. In fact, they have reiterated uh, publicly through their official spokesman a desire to commit as many October the 7th as they can. So I completely understand why Israel wants to get rid of these terrorists. The, the question is how do they do that without killing many, many more civilians? And as we saw from the Saudi statement, there are many 
uh, Arab countries now in the region increasingly concerned that if there is a full attack on Rafa, which has a million and a half people, a lot of civilians are going to die. Right. And, I, and, and, you know, to your point before, I think the death toll is actually vastly undercounted considering how we have not even began to excavate the bodies under the rubble. So I would say that the death toll is a vast undercount. As far as Mossab's point about Hamas, I think that, you know, Mos Mossab is the Palestinian who hates Palestinians. He's, he's developed a lucrative career being able to lie about basic facts about this conflict. And so when he says Palestinians or Hamas, what he really means is all Arabs and all Muslims, in fact, um, I've seen that plain as day in his social media and talks. He thinks that all Muslims are terrorists. And so, I mean, this is credit to the point that he is actually credited to jailing what is called the Mandela, the Palestinian Mandela. Marwan Barghouti, this is a guy who he put in prison 20 years ago, who was marching side by side with Israeli peace activists, denouncing Hamas, killing civilians. So again, I mean, when we're looking at someone who's worked for an Israeli intelligence, who spouts the same rhetoric as Israelis, who say Hamas, but what they really mean is all Palestinians. I mean, it's really hard to debate someone on the fundamental reality and the principles of you know the facts of this conflict. Now, to your point, Piers, about what should they do about Hamas, I reject the premise of Israel's genocide. I'm not going to sit here and say, yes, um, Hamas is a terrorist organization and they need to be eradicated. Of course, that's not true. And I think that we can both agree. What do you mean that that's not it's true? It's an impossible task. It's not true. That Here we go. I knew this was going to happen. This always happens. This always happens. Someone says or doesn't condemn Hamas for whatever reason, and then he won't let it go until that person gets grilled to oblivion. That something needs to be done about Hamas. I don't agree with Why? that framework and the parameters of that debate. Why? Because Israel's been because Israel's been committing ethnic cleansing and genocidal policies against the Palestinians for 70 years. But Hamas literally years. has and, and a charter. Yeah, but before, Abby, hang on. Hamas literally has on, a here's... stated charter of the elimination of Israel. That is the purest personification of a publicly stated policy of genocide that's, that's not I can true, imagine. There, that's not true. Their revised charter says that they actually recognize the existence of the Israeli state among 1967 borders. That, that's the revised charter. And they actually make a political differentiation between Zionism and Judaism. So that's when the actual official charter spokesman. Hamas. So, so when you keep, pointing, is, to a, you keep so pointing to a random spokesperson. Yeah. Yeah, but he's, the, he's actually he's not a random. He's the official spokesman for Hamas. Mm -hmm. And he said literally two weeks after October the 7th, we are going to do this again and again and again. That is an existential. So regardless of what that spokesperson said is true or not, we can do this whataboutism game back and forth because Israeli politicians themselves on multiple occasions have been calling Palestinians animals, uh, saying that they need to eradicate. Like they have referred to Palestinian people as animals on multiple different occasions so if you want to talk about oh a hamas spokesperson said x y and z we can play this what about ism back and forth and we can ping pong it because each spokesperson has said incredibly inflammatory things granted the israeli side has said it way more than hamas if we actually even want to get into the nitty-gritty potential genocidal threat to the existence of everyone in israel clearly said publicly on camera I mean, he's brazen about it look i think that when you're comparing one guy and his statement to literally the dozens of Abby. genocidal statements. Okay, but look at the official spokespeople of Israel, Piers, and look at the actual have one genocide on. they're committing. You cannot, compare, you cannot compare the two. It's a complete false equivalency. One guy is saying one thing. The other dozens of Israeli ministers and cabinet officials and public media personas on TV are saying one thing and actually doing it on so the you ground. You would allow Hamas to stay in power? On, on the ground. It's not up to me, Piers. Hamas is representative of a large sector. You've been expressing many okay, opinions. But here's the thing. What's your Marmon opinion? Barghouti, Marmon Barghouti is the most popular unifying figure in Palestinian society. He would resoundingly win in an election against Hamas. So what this is about, this isn't about Hamas. This is about eliminating every faction all of about Palestinian Hamas. resistance, peaceful or not. It is not about Hamas. Of it's course all it's about, not about what Hamas, Hamas did this on October a, the 7th. But, but Piers, I think we both know it's not. Because what is the military occupation founded upon? What, when did Hamas come into power? We know that this isn't just about Hamas. What was Israel doing in the West Bank the year prior to October 7th? They killed 500 Palestinians, 80 children. This is ethnic cleansing. This is a military occupation. As long as you have these policies in place, you will never get to the root of the violence, Piers. All right, Masab, there was an allegation there that you... Abby, I 
actually pushed back and Pierce didn't do the whole ping pong shit he always does. Okay, period. Damn, this is good. She pushed back hard and it actually worked. Worked really well. You think all Muslims are terrorists? What's your response to what Abby Martin said? Well, you know, this is Abby's uh, desperate attempt to discredit me. I am a man of the field. I fought against Hamas as part of intelligence, legitimate intelligence organization against savage group that were targeting uh, civilians in suicide bombing attacks, waves of suicide bombing attacks that they kill people indiscriminately. So Abby today want me for some reason to apologize for saving human life because my truth- Wait, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, hold on. So he can admit when indiscriminate lives are being taken when it only benefits his agenda and his talking points. This is like the fourth Israeli spokesperson on Pierce to do this same exact tactic. They literally acknowledge when atrocities are happening to people only when it benefits their own ideology and talking points. It's so freaking annoying. Uh, challenges her convenient truth. Um, Abby does not have the authority. Uh, she's just a self-appointed, uh, low-grade uh, journalist. How can you be a journalist and you call this a genocide, ethnic cleansing? And she just keep repeating ethnic cleansing, genocide, colonialism, etc. None of it is real, including Palestine. It's only in your head. None of it is existential. Palestine was never born. How can you free it? It was never there, it's just a colonial entity and some people choose to make it into a national identity and this parrot has been just repeating Hamas propaganda. Marwa I can't believe this guy is Palestinian. Like this man is literally a Palestinian Arab and he's spewing the most racist, god awful propaganda that came straight out of the Israeli machine. That's insane. At this point, you fundamentally cannot say that Palestine did not exist. You just can't. There's so much proof and documentation that the land of Palestine existed. If you want to argue that you reserve a right to stay on that land, that's something else. But saying that the land of Palestine is not real and it's a fiction of people's imagination is a wild statement to make. Absolutely wild statement to make. But Juan Barguti that she's talking about him. She never met him. I knew Marwan before he got to power. He is a criminal. He killed five people. He has blood on his hands. He cheated on his wife. He has a secret son that he never revealed it to the public. Of course, I can criticize him and I can criticize all the criminals that I know personally. She's been there only for a visit and maybe she had some falafel sandwich, you know, and she really was blown away of the Palestinian experience. There is no such a thing as Palestine. It's about- Okay, let me get this straight. So she was blown away by the Palestinian experience, but there is no Palestine. Got it. Got it. No, that makes total sense. Bro is spitting. Bro is spitting fact. About time to retire. Find a different job. You're not a journalist. You don't qualify even to be a mother. Wow. Abby. Uh M Masab, um, you know. No, that is so disrespectful. Peers should have like been like, that's unacceptable. That's a personal jab and I don't allow that on my debate panels. He literally just allowed a panelist to tell another panelist that she's not a good mother and she shouldn't be a mother. Like that's insane. How's, th how's he allowing that? Oh, it's usually a public figure. If they were caught lying about half the things that they said, they would be completely discredited and never allowed airtime. You are spewing such a historical anti-Arab bigotry that not even the fringe of Israeli society would agree with you. I mean, I not, not even Israeli Arab. historians I'm agree. Islam. Sir. I'm not anti-Arab. I am Arab. I am Arab. This okay. is my ethnicity. Sir. Sir. Islam is just anti-Muslim bigotry. I am not a Masab. Muslim. Masab. We are Arabs. Masab. Hold on, let me get this straight. He's an Arab, but he's not Palestinian. The land of Palestine doesn't exist. It's a fiction of our imagination. But then Abby went to Palestine and she was blown away by the falafels, allegedly. Like, I don't know how his brain works, but none of this is making sense. Okay, then anti-Muslim bigotry, which is frankly appalling considering that there's a billion people on the planet who would char be characterized as you as, you know, extremists who need to be used force against, according to you. But Masab, um, not even Israeli historians would agree with the fact that you claim that there's no military occupation in the West Bank, that there's no apartheid state. Israelis at least admit, yes, those things exist, but here's why they're necessary and justified. They don't even agree with you. You're so fringe that 
I don't even know where you're coming from. I mean, so again, if we can't even agree with the basic facts of the conflict and the reality in front of our eyes, I don't know how we can really even discuss this. Well, yeah, because you don't qualify. Well, I think it's the political her that. credentials. Listen, well, they, everyone, uh, everyone's best, entitled listen, to an opinion. Listen, Pierce, best, listen, best case scenario, if there is an occupation, it's between Israel and Jordan, or it's between Israel and Egypt, because it was not an occupation of a country called Palestine. There was never Palestine in history. This is not an absurd statement. It's reality. Palestine never exists. It was not a country. It was not a nation. It's not an ethnic group. We are Arabs. We are the Arabs of Judea and Samaria. And when I was born, like millions of Palestinians, we had Jordanian uh, birth certificate. The people of Gaza were Egyptian with, with Egyptian birth certificate. There was no Palestine. Yasser Arafat created this entity uh, and everybody believed him. And this lie must die. This is why I don't like what Abby and her likes doing by trying to delegitimize Israel. She's trying to discredit me. Who gave you the authority? How dare you? You are a I'm spy. A son of that region. You're I'm a spy child for of that Israeli conflict. intelligence, you Masab. It is not funny. It's not funny. Your tale, it's your not false funny narrative all. need to it's... stop because- I'm sorry, this feels like a skit. Not because of Abby Martin, but he just feels like a skit. There's so many things to unpack here, but let's take a guess. Why do you guys think that most Palestinians have Egyptian and or Jordanian citizenship? Maybe because it's because they were- Maybe it's because they were ethnically cleansed and forced out to neighboring countries like Egypt and Jordan. I don't know, just a thought. It's so wild to me, you know, the, the propaganda with this dude is running deep. I mean, at this point, he's not even saying anything that's truthful. He's just basically going off of vibes. It's you are creating chaos. Masab. Listen, Abby, you are bringing Masab, chaos very... to the United States and you will be okay. held accountable. You are just a okay. criminal like them. Sure. Okay, Masab, you can't be taken seriously and you're not legitimate because you are literally, you have worked for Israeli you intelligence take me to out your own not. people. But listen, Sooner okay, but Masab, or later, you, you can't realize. discredit my reality as well. You can't discredit my reality as well. I was in the West Bank. I had assault rifles then pointed at my head from a 17-year-old American from to Palo Alto. Me. You, that's an occupation. You are in my domain Masab. right that's now. That's a military occupation. Okay, you are in my domain. When you come to my domain, you have to pay respect. You have to respect all the effort that I put to save human lives, and you cannot reduce that into some why, propaganda because why it's on not, earth would I respect it's not about you for Israel, putting the about... leader of Fatah, Masab? You put the the most unifying popular Palestinian figure. You are credited to putting him in prison. This is someone who would win an election against Hamas. He is a peace activist. He was fighting for a two state solution. This isn't about Hamas, and you know it. This is about you shutting down, tamping down on all factions of Palestinian society. And let's be clear, what is Palestine supposed to do? Yeah, the fact that he just said, you have entered my domain, no, my domain, you need to respect me. He's literally colonizing the debate. Thank you for pointing that out. He is colonizing the debate. He's like, listen, you are on TV with me. Shut the fuck up and listen to me. When in reality, that's not how it works, babes. Like the world does not revolve around you. And unfortunately, you're not a paid spy on this show where you can just spout and do anything you want and you get paid for it and you get exonerated. Honestly, I can't even imagine the war crimes that this man has created, done, just international crimes, period, as both a USA and American former spy, Ex excuse me, a USA and an Israeli former spy, a part of Mossad. Like, bro, the American CIA on top of the Israeli CIA as a Palestinian is wild. That money, that money must be ringing good. Like, they must have been feeding this man caviar and oysters every day because god damn that's a crazy combination to have especially as a palestinian person to do what are palestinians supposed to do when in 2018 thousands of palestinians in gaza marched peacefully to this fortified perimeter fence that israeli snipers have authorized themselves to shoot to kill and that's exactly what they did they massacred over 200 peaceful demonstrators medics press Journalists clearly marked press, disabled people in wheelchairs and children. These are all violations of international law in the Geneva Convention. Israeli snipers perched up behind sand dunes, picked people off one by one in a methodical slaughter over the course of several months. That's when Palestinians tried to peacefully protest. So I think the question should be, 
what should Palestinians do? Because they're not even allowed to advocate for their legal rights. They're not even allowed to raise up a Palestinian flag. I visited a place called Sebastia in the occupied West Bank, and Palestinians were shot and in the hospital for simply erecting a Palestinian flag on a hilltop several days prior. This is the brutal reality of military occupation in the West Bank, Masab. I mean, I want the violence to end. I empathize with the victims of both sides of this. And that's why I want to get to the root, the root of the conflict. Yes, I don't go out there and say Jews can't be trusted like you say about Muslims. I empathize with all civilian life. I believe and cherish the sanctity of human life. And that's why I want to get to the root of why violence occurs, Masab. Let me ask Mossab a question. Do you agree with the principle that Palestinians right. should be entitled to exactly the same human rights as Israelis? Listen, the suffering of the Arabians, again, stop calling them Palestinians. They are not Palestinians. We are Arabs. We are the Arabs of Judea. He's not letting that go. He's like, stop calling me Palestinian. Call me Arab. I am the Arab of Judea. And Samaria and Israel and the Jewish people well, have Palestinians no Palestinians call themselves the Palestinians. Of their state. Well, you gave them that name. You forced the international community and the rest All of right, the well, world... All right, well, let me rephrase the question. Should the people... What the fuck is he saying? What is he saying? This is so stupid. How did this man even get a platform? The should the people who live in Gaza and on the West Bank, should they be entitled to the same human rights as Israelis? If they know, if they have equal responsibility as the decent citizens of the state of Israel, that includes Arabs, Druze, Christians, and all other citizens of the state of Israel, then yes, they have equal rights. But if they are not taking their responsibility, if they are using violence, sending suicide bombers, and killing babies, kidnapping a one year old, you know, how, what, how do you answer to the mother and to the mothers of uh, uh, the hostages and all those who got killed on October 7? You know, it's very easy to just try to delegitimize Israel. This is what Abby and her likes have been trying to do for so long. But they don't have the moral uh, power to say what Hamas did, all the waves of suicide bombing attacks. October 7, that was a genocide. That was a genocide. So stop spreading the false narrative. Now, regarding to the Arabs who live there, they need a decent- You can argue that October 7th was an atrocity, right? That was a result of decades and decades and decades of oppression that they put a group of people in. You can argue that, which I've seen many big people do like Hassan and, and etc. But what you cannot do is argue that October 7th was a genocide because by definition, it just was not a genocide. That's not what you describe as a genocide. What is a genocide is cooping people up into a small area of location and aerating them without allowing them to get any food or or medical aid or anything else, right? Uh, this guy is full of propaganda. I mean, he's clearly getting paid by the Israeli government still. I would be surprised if he's not because the propaganda that he's spewing is so far right that even the Israeli government doesn't go that far right. And like the Israeli government is extremely brain rottingly right leaning. Decent police force. They need a good economy. They need good education. And if they are able to integrate then naturally could be a political entity based on their needs. But right now, when she say Palestine, who is? Islamic Jihad, Fatah, Marwan Barghouti, Ismail Haniya, uh, Hamas, uh, Public Front. Uh, they are so conflicted. We don't have even, they don't have agenda. They don't have leadership. They don't have legitimacy. This is an anarchy that has been going on for about 70 years. And it's about time for it to stop. Now to transform, to integrate the society, we must protect the children. And this is a priority number one before we talk about Palestinian state or whatever name you want to give it. That when we have a savage group, Islamists, by the name of Allah, hijacking and using children as human shields, their own children, after killing Jewish children, then this is a, a, a capital crime. We cannot blind our eyes 
we have to deal with priorities. This is what I mean by all Zionists have this problem, right? Or most people who adhere to Zionist ideology. They want to consistently talk about the atrocities happening under the Islamic Republic of Iran. They want to talk about the atrocities of October 7th, etc. But they fail to recognize that they themselves have committed a bunch of atrocities, namely women and children, innocent women and children, civilians. When you ask them that, oh, well, Rafa is unsafe. We can't send anyone to Rafa. I don't know. They were using them as human shields. We don't know how many of them were civilians. Which, by the way, I don't even know what the human shield argument means when you get into the nitty gritty. Because how do you use a child as a human shield if the child gets murdered with the whole entire family in an air raid? So the, the child shield argument is faulty at best it just it's just wild because they're not even trying with their propaganda they're just being bullshit first we remove the savage group out of power if abby's intention were pro pro peace then this is our intention that we should unify our efforts toward this main goal first goal priorities then after that we can talk about the future and this criminal you call marwan barghouti in israeli prison how how are you supposed to differentiate who is and who is not Hamas when Israeli authorities have literally called almost every entity in Gazan society Hamas, including UNRWA? They even are calling students on college campuses Hamas. I mean, there's summary executions of doctors thrown in mass graves because they're called Hamas. So I'm sorry that this label has been rendered completely meaningless. And as far as the term human shields, look, there's been no evidence, according to Amnesty International during CAS-LED and the 2014 onslaught and today. I mean, there is absolutely no evidence provided that Hamas uses human shields and that somehow justifies this heinous slaughter of predominantly women and children in Gaza. And even if they were literally standing behind hostages, you still can't just kill hundreds of people in a single airstrike because a Hamas commander is right there. And that's exactly what Israel is admittedly doing through AI. They're saying that they could kill up to 100 civilians for every Hamas official. It's absolutely outlandish. But if a group like Hamas launches a terrorist attack on Israel that kills 1,200 people, they take over 200 more people hostage, including babies and Holocaust survivors, that is a declaration of war, which they knew would lead to the kind of response we've seen from Israel. And Israel would argue, mm. and they would have some sound argument to this, that if someone declares war on you in that manner and you respond, and in eliminating the terrorists who committed that heinous crime, civilian casualties are incurred, they would say that that is exactly what has happened in any other war in history, that the principle is the same, that the civilian loss of life is appalling, but that the prince I mean, it's interesting because they continuously call October 7th the terrorist attack, but Israel has taken out far more people than October 7th, has committed way more atrocities than what happened on October 7th, and they don't deem that as terrorist activities. Like, okay, if you want to tell me that only October 7th is terrorism, then what the hell is a bunch of civilian mass graves in front of multiple hospitals? What do you count that as? What do you count sniping people from a drone because it's fun as? People innocent civilians that are just walking on a runway. What do you count as credited reports from the UN that women within Israeli jails are getting raped and sexually assaulted or that the young boys and the young men are getting thrown into cages with dogs and getting dog bites all over their body? Which, by the way, if you didn't know, the Israeli government actually trains most of the police dogs that we use in America. So, I mean, this list goes on and on and on and on. What do you call the blockade on medical and food supplies? What do you call the la lack of access to clean water? What do you call the fact that you told everyone to go to Rafa and then you drop leaflets six months later and tell them to evacuate to Khan Yunus, a place that's rendered completely useless? There's so many things that have happened, right? We have the story of Hind, the little girl that was in the car. Her whole entire family around her got sniped fucking murdered. She was the only person that was alive in the car. The people that went to save her got air raided. So you had a fucking Red Cross, Red Crescent ambulance that got air raided, turned into smoke. This girl witnessed that happen in front of her too. And then 12 days later, when the Israeli military pulled back, they found her body decomposing with her family. So she died scared, alone, hungry, probably cold around all of her family members in an ambulance that came to save her, all of which are dead. So if you want to 
continuously call October 7th a terrorist act, which fine, call it that. I'll give you that right, just for the sake of this argument. You fundamentally have to see everything that Israel is doing as a terrorist attack as well, or else you're being completely dishonest. You're not being fair. You're being partial. And I have been covering this since October extensively. The amount of atrocities that have happened in Gaza, the amount of international laws, war crimes that have happened in that area, not just in Gaza, but also in the West Bank. I mean, the raids in the West Bank have tripled. There's so many raids in the West Bank constantly now because far right settlers go in and do whatever the the hell they want and they don't get any consequences. I mean, the laundry list goes on and on and on. So if you want to continuously bring up October 7th, October 7th, October 7th, that was a terror attack, that was a terror attack, you better bring up what's been happening in the Gaza Strip for the past six months. Because if you don't, you're not being honest. You're not being a good journalist. You're not doing your job. And Piers does it all the time. So. But the, the principle of retaliating against a body of people who have committed one of the worst terror attacks in living memory, that is why they're doing it. Piers, there's no symmetry between the two sides. It's complete asymmetrical mass slaughter of women and kids. You know that. Well, actually, you could also Hamas did commit a mass slaughter of women and kids. They did. But you say there's no symmetry. But Piers, there's an, you there's an absolute but you, symmetry. But there's no symmetry. there's no symmetry between an occupying colonizing force and the people that they're occupying and colonizing. You could obviously make the same argument that preempted October 7th, that it was a declaration of war to siege Gaza, to prevent aid from getting in, to shoot people that stray too far out that are fishing, that can't go get medical aid and are sentenced to death within Gaza. Is that not a declaration of war? Is it not a declaration of war to violate international law to maintain a brutal fascist military dictatorship in the West Bank? These are all um, these all preempted October 7th. So it just keeps going back and back to what is the root of actual violence, Piers. OK, Mossad, I'll give the, the last word to you. Where do we get peace from all this hell? Naturally, uh, if uh, the Israeli protocol is not sufficient and it's not satisfactory to the expectations of, uh, of Abby and uh, many of her uh, friends, then I say, how about we punish Hamas by their own laws, by the Islamic law? Why don't we follow the Islamic uh, protocol? In this case, the Islamic law says, behead all men and take all women and children as booty. This is their uh, moral stand. So she say it's asymmetric. Did he just take, say take all women and children as booty? I just honestly, they need to find better propagandists. This is just embarrassing. And so she say it's asymmetric. Well, we already know that. It's a very dirty war. We are dealing with people with the mentality of the seventh century tribalism. It's not an easy uh, mission for a democracy, for any country, for any modern army, for any civilized society to deal with this. So we need to be reasonable. I understand if people are anti-war and they are pro-children, pro-life, me too. But sometimes we have to make very difficult choices. And Israel was really pushed to the corner. Israel is fighting for its very existence. I am fighting for my, my very existence. I did not kill any Arab. I did not kill any of their tribesmen, but they want me to cease to exist. Why? Because I criticize their religion. I criticize their stupid ideas that are leading. Bro, no one is after you. You live in America and you used to work for Mossad, okay? You used to literally work for the American government with the CIA. Like, please shut the fuck up. No one is coming after you. You're not a victim here. If anything, you probably victimized hundreds of people who didn't deserve it. Please, please. I'm gonna, I'm about to lose my mind with this guy. Like, this man is so fucking stupid. You're, you cannot be this stupid. You genuinely, genuinely cannot. And I cannot believe that this man has actually written a book. Who's your fucking ghostwriter? Because I know your stupid ass did not write that fucking book. I am not Palestinian. I am Arab. I am from the Arab land. I am from the, uh, I'm Arab from Judea. Arab? Or actually, excuse me, Arabic is a language. Arab is a race. So, what's your ethnicity, bro? Because the Israelis won't accept you. I just want to know. Listen, 
Pierce gives stupid ass people platforms like crackhead Barney or this ex Mossad agent. But this man is an all time low in my opinion. But the fact that he thought that Abby Martin and this man are on the same caliber, wild. You think that these two people are on the same caliber. You put them on the same debate panel because you thought that they would be able to have a constructive conversation. You genuinely thought that, or did you just do it because you knew that this man is completely unhinged and he's going to give you the views and the numbers. But on for some reason, Piers is constantly on some fucking crusade where he's like, oh, I, I have been giving this conflict a lot of views. I have been talking about it for the past six months because I give a shit. No, dude. No, you don't. Because if you actually gave a shit, you would bring on a person that can formulate three fucking sentences without saying, listen, okay? And putting poor Abby Martin, which by the way, she's been carrying herself wonderfully here. I would have lost my fucking mind, okay? You would have actually put someone worth their goddamn grain on this debate panel, but no. You brought this man that can't even formulate a full sentence and doesn't even believe he's fucking Palestinian when he's Palestinian. That's literally what he is. He's Palestinian. He's Palestinian. I, I don't care how much he tries to say he's Arab. He's Palestinian. And fine, you want to hate Muslims? Go ahead. You can hate Muslims. I don't know who the fuck you are trying to speak for all Arab people, though, and saying that oh, all Arab people want to get rid of Islam. No, bitch. You're just one Arab person that worked for Mossad. I can guarantee you probably don't speak for 90% of Arab people in the whole entire fucking world. So why don't you just shut the fuck up, please? And honestly, this is an all-time new low. I thought Crackhead Barney was an all-time new low. Nah, nah, this takes the cake. Leading towards global chaos. And instead of spreading the narrative, the victim narrative, what we need to do actually, we need to localize it, not globalize it. And we need to be reasonable of our expectations uh, from a democracy in the middle of crisis. Okay. Mossad Hussain Youssef, Abi Martin. It was a spirited debate. I think I learned, as I always do from these debates, I learned a little bit more than I knew before. So I thank you both very much indeed. All right. Let's do our debate reaction recap. This was one of the most insufferable peers debate panels that I've ever watched in my life. And I don't know if it's because of the Israeli spokesperson that came on first and just did not even know how to back his claim ups, or if it's because of this weirdo man that just literally spewed a bunch of nonsense for, I don't know, 40 minutes, however long the video was, the debate panel was. But also, I just genuinely feel like Piers is dipping his toes into a new low where he's bringing on people like crackhead Barney and this man to get some views. And it's okay, I get it. Ratings are important. The clicks and the views and the drama, I get it. It gets his show going. I understand the logic. But genuinely speaking, I feel like he needs to kind of recenter himself because he's really lost the path. I don't know what the path was to begin with, but whatever path this is on, straighten out a little bit. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching my YouTube channel. My name is Ariana Jasmine. Please make sure to like, subscribe, comment for more videos like this. And we are finally partnered on this YouTube channel. So thank you so much for subscribing and watching my videos. I love each and every one of you. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.